So at this moment, uh, I would like to invite Professor Jabta Khan Shinwari, uh, who is uh, from Kaidi Azam, uh, Kaidi Azam University, Islamabad, Pakistan. Before I invite him, I would like to uh, briefly introduce uh, his background. Uh, he is hailing from Kohat, uh, tribal area of, uh, in Pakistan. Uh, got PhD uh, from Kyoto University, Japan, followed by several postdoc fellowships in Japan. Uh, he served Pakistan Museum of National History, National Agricultural Research Center, and uh, Comstack and many other uh, institutes before uh, joining as Vice Chancellor of Kohat University of Science and Technology. He is one of the celebrity uh, scientists, uh, uh, internationally renowned and significant number, 475 articles in high impact factor journals. Uh, you can find his uh, brief biography uh, uh, printed uh, in our proceedings. Uh, I humbly invite uh, Professor Jabta Khan Shinwari for his delivery on potential dual impact of frontier technology on nature for sustainable development and biodiversity con uh, conservation. I expect you would enjoy your talk uh, uninterruptedly uh, uh, and complete your talk within 20 minutes. Welcome uh, to, you, uh, uh, to you for delivery of your talk. Thank you very much, Professor. I hope you can hear me and see my slides. Uh, yes, I have shared my screen. we can see your slide very clearly and also your vo uh, voice very clearly. You are audible, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks. Inshallah, I will finish within time. First of all, let me thank uh, the Iron Lady, Madam Hasina, who was with me in Kuala Lumpur and reached, mashallah, there, and then the Akat and all other organizers, president of the academy and other friends. Pleasure talking to you, and I'm really grateful that you give me an opportunity. Uh, uh, Nuri, my friend, uh, uh, he may be there. He's my friend, ASA president. So thanks a lot. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you is, about uh, uh, the presentation, uh, I try to move it. Ah, so first of all, uh, you know uh, the, the world is moving so fast. A lot of modern technologies are coming in. Uh, they, we benefit from those technologies. You all are enjoying artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc., etc. But we have to discuss the crucial role, whether this is good for human or we may be, uh, you know, having some, uh, some dance in our future. So that is what we are going to discuss. First of all, let me link this uh, biodiversity conservation uh, with the sustainable development goal. I believe that almost all of these uh, 17 sustainable development goals are somehow linked with the biodiversity. If you are talking about health, if you are talking about hunger, if you are talking about poverty, the indigenous communities, but specifically SDG4, life before water, and life and land are the special ones. Now the frontier technologies, the modern technologies, frontier I call it as they are on the border, they have come, they have come, came in. And there you know all of this, as I said, artificial intelligence, internet of things, biotechnology, modern, um, uh, you know, synthetic biology, blockchain, and renewable energy, etc. So there are a lot of opportunities, but challenges too. So I, I take the first one close to my heart, and I myself am the member of an international body of the UN where we are talking about the potential uh, impact of sympathetic biology on the you know, uh, biodiversity and conservation. The problem is that we are creating scientists when they, the genome project came in, First, they, 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 they say, we try to read what God has created. Now we want to rewrite the lies. Means we will create life with chemicals. There will be no you know, template from any source. Only the chemicals and you can use, uh, you can create a life. 
This can be used for good, this can be used for bad, and I will give you certain examples. Now, what is it? Just for the people who are not uh, much equipped with this uh, uh, discipline, this is where we, we use a digital and engineering practices. We apply it to the biological systems and organisms and to produce things for the human welfare. This is what the aim of synthetic biology is. How we do it? We create living genomes like we already did. We have created some viruses. We design interchangeable parts. We can have parts of the living organism. And we can construct artificial cells. And, uh, you know, we can have synthetic molecules, etc. So this is like you are working on a computer. You mix genetic code. You spell error check, shuffle a bit, and push the button, go ahead. And you have a new life in your hand. Uh, now, uh, there are many countries they are using. We have an annual conference where they discuss the new product. Uh, there are th 300 teams in 42 countries that they are uh, genetically engineered, machine eye gem. I was just in, and in, in, uh, we were, Madam Hasina Khan was also there, uh, where we, uh, so we saw the eye gem conference. Uh, with many participants. So, now when we, we talk about the synthetic biology in the new world, you can have something good for yourself, for example, in pharmaceutical, biofuel, fragrance, even the beer that you make, its flavor you can change with synthetic biology, etc., etc. You can produce smaller organisms. You can uh, have other natural things. I will give you a couple of examples because of the time limit. But, this is not just for medicine, uh, for polymers, for renewable plastic, for biofuel, building material, a lot of things, even for fabric. So you use pigments for fabric for the good use. A couple of examples like th in therapeutic, uh, the production of anti-malarial drug precursor, artemisinic acid is a very good result of synthetic biology. Or another example is control ex uh, you know, transgene expression in some, uh, and uh, then you find skin lotion from the apple metabolic fluorotin. It's a very good example. And biofuel, of course, through synthetic biology, you can uh, have uh, uh, those things available for yourself. But the challenges are, what are the challenges? This was some natural created life on Earth, and the biology is very complex. Uh, you you cannot understand, maybe you are a biology, you, you on, only know about the parasite, but you don't know how it impacts the rest of the ecosystem. And then the capability of this designing, uh, we know how to build, but not yet what to build. And potential benefits are enormous, but potential risks are quite real. That we need to address. For example, I give you example, people are thinking, why not to reclone the extinct animal like dinosaur, for example. So will it be good for biodiversity or will it be bad? We have to understand this. Introducing now giant kind of animals or plants or whatever, are those who are gone, the, the ecosystem has evolved itself, interfering in it may cause a huge loss. And then, of course, sugar economy, for example. Some countries, they, are, they believe that why not we make biofuel from sugar cane rather than having sugar because biofuel is more expensive in Brazil, for example, than the sugar. So th those, again, the other country that we are, you know, uh, uh, having business will, ha will be having a lot of problem. I give you here two examples. Very uh, synthetic uh, virus like polio. This was created synthetically without any, you know, template from the compound. Now, the question is, on one side, you invest billions of dollars to eradicate polio. On other side, you are, in the name of experiment, you are doing it. Uh, similar, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, European scientists were trying to have, to create uh, fungus that they can spray on Afghanistan and other poppy or uh, drug plants to kill it. The question was, when the crops are killed, where this, uh, this organism will go? Will it need a passport to enter in the neighboring countries like Pakistan, Iran, or, uh, you know, uh, Central Asia, etc.? So those are the questions that we need to address. And uh, this is the malarian example. This is good. They, they are now uh, creating 
you know, only male uh, malaria so that it's finished with the time and you don't have malaria or dengue fever, for example. But the question is that it has a role in the ecosystem, good or bad, genetically modifying all this and then crops and weed resistant, many other examples. Now, the positive impact of, what are the positive impacts? This was a little bit about synthetic biology, my own discipline. Now I'm talking about the computer-related discipline, like AI, artificial intelligence can give you data for monitoring species and ecosystem, a very good one. And then you can have, you know, devised strategies to conserve it for the future, of the whole wildlife. And this will have a positive impact on the sustainable development. Uh, you can have resource efficiency, you can reduce car carbon uh, footprints, uh, solar and wind power contribute, etc. Um, the negative impact is that with this technology, uh, extraction of rare minerals for the technology can lead to habitat destruction, for example. Ecosystem de degradation, harming biodiversity. Another example is the climate engineering. The scientists are thinking with the frontier technology to engineer the climate and, uh, you know, have uh, aerosol to suck the bad, uh, you know, gases. But the question is whether it's good for the humanity or bad for you. You don't know. Uh, and if any accident, you may destroy the only home, our Earth as a whole. So those are the things that we, we need to discuss. Uh, and then the e-waste with all these computers and everything, mobile phones, where to, you know, uh, these hazards in the community. These e-waste is a big problem and issue. People are trying to find solution, but yet they, they, they uh, didn't succeed. So what should we do? That is the balancing act. We should precautionary approach that you should have a balance between technology progress and environmental preservation for the coexistence between humanity and nature. And they, they, they should be based on legal and ethical use of the technology, like, like robotics, uh, security, biases, planning, uh, specifically equity for the poor country. The technology is mainly in the rich countries' hands. And the they, they, they recent example of vaccine and, and uh, pandemic was a question. The whole African continent did not produce a single dose of vaccine. And nobody was sure to give the intellectual property right for them. So, what should we do? International collaboration plus policy and regulation by the government, how to, you know, have an eye on the use of frontier technology so that it didn't harm and we could have biodiversity conservation goal. And now, AI for conservation, there are a case study. I give you two examples. One is the wild book platform that implies AI to monitor the whale shark how they move, how they, how they aid in conservation things. The other, the other example of good use of AI is renewable energy initiative. You take it solar system, you take uh, the green gas emissions, etc., reusing it and decreasing the fossil fuel use. So the future prospect hold immense potential in frontier technology, innovation like well, this can be have precision in agriculture because of climate change, we are disturbed, we are worried, flooding, etc. This uh, technology can help you and this will really minimize the negative impact on the biodiversity. For all this, we need collaboration and partnership. Excellent example of ASA having workshop in Bangladesh. We appreciate it, brotherly country. And I think this will, this brainstorming, talking to each other will give a lot of things. If I conclude, the dual impact of frontier technologies on sustainable development and conservation is complex. By using this responsibility, you can have harmonious balance that will propel us for the sustainable future. It is a collective responsibility to ensure the technology is a force for good and a catalyst for positive change, no negativity. We ensure because this has a potential of quick growth and a potential of destruction quickly. So let me thank. I, I consume my time uh, responsibly because I want you guys to take rest. It's a, a, a very good discipline. Uh, the message is if we all work together as a team, we will achieve the goal, inshallah. Once again, let me thank the leadership of Bangladesh Academy of Sciences, the ASA leadership president, 
شریف نام القبیر صاحب میڈم حسینہ اینڈ لیاقت گڈ فرینڈ ٹچ ود می اینڈ آل آف یور ٹیم اینڈ دا چیئر پرسن آف دا سیشن تھینک یو ویری مچ سر فار انٹروڈیوسنگ می سچ گڈ مینر تھینکس الاٹ اینڈ ہیو اے گڈ ڈے اینی کوشچن آئی ایم دیر آئی سیوڈ سم مینٹس فار انٹریکشن تھینک یو ایکسلنٹ ایکسلنٹ ٹاک فرام ڈاکٹر جب تک شینواری Uh, the topic is uh, quite interesting, frontiers technology, how changing our life uh, from uh, concept to uh, prospect, challenges, uh, you covered uh, a lot uh, and uh, it's really a thought-provoking uh, lecture. So uh, now house is open, he, uh, he managed time, uh, even uh, uh, less than allocated time he completed his talk. Thank you so much. Now. Um, Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Yes, now uh, I would like to uh, request the uh, participants, please, uh, if you have any question or comment, uh, please introduce yourself and then, yes, our Honorable President, Professor A.K. Azad Choudhury. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful presentation, Professor Emeritus. You have really um, covered all the areas of frontier technology, the pros and cons, good and bad, side effects, collaboration, regulation. What you have come to that final conclusion, I agree with you. There should be a balance between the benefit to the human society and civilization and survivability of the human race, as opposed to its destruction for personal gain individual gain and national gain. Parochial nationalism sometime will bring disaster using this frontier technology. I agree with you, there should be a fair balance between the good and regulation for all these things. It includes AI, it includes synthetic biology, it includes precision medicine, it includes the what I call the environmental effect of climate change, zero emission energy, and also renewable energy. All these things should be covered uh, from the perspective, global perspective, rather than individual country or national interest. And thank you very much for your brilliant presentation. Excellent, excellent comment. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for encouragement. Anyone have any question? Okay. Uh, if no question, uh, I have uh, uh, one question. Hmm? Sir, okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jet Korim, our uh, senior vice president of Bangladesh Academy of Science. No, I, I share with our president. He mentioned that the regulation is the first and it should be globally done. In fact, we have different framework under the FAO. We have seen UNCCD, UNFCCC, and many others. But this does not work. Because when we sit for any negotiation, we divide into developed country, underdeveloped country, east, west, different forms. And that creates the chaotic situation. I could see more danger of the frontier technology than the um, benefit. So to do this, I agree fully that we should do it. But all nations should first start. That is my proposal. And then they should deal with the transboundary issues. And then all the academies, societies, they can foster the negotiation, the how it could be globally achieved. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, excellent comment. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, uh, to Professor uh, Shinwari. Uh, in case of uh, uh, synthetic biology, uh, we, are, we are able to make the virus, or even you mentioned in Afghanistan, uh, UK is trying to make uh, synthetic uh, you know, organism to destroy the poppy cultivation or like that. Uh, and you mentioned passport and other things. Uh, I have question is that in case of uh, this type of bio weapons, there is no need to have the passport and visa because they can move very faster. In the past, uh, 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 you know, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we 
uh, uh, experienced. What do you think in case of uh, balancing by regulation? Do you think uh, harmonization in the regulation globally we should work on it rather than uh, regulation for the particular country? Thank you very much and an excellent question. And whoever is listening, we, we invite you. We are having a uh, uh, you know workshop on 3rd and 4th December in Comstech OIC Commission uh, for Science and Technology on this subject. Uh, we have international convention, Bangladesh and uh, majority, 95% of the countries have signed that convention, which is Biotoxin Weapon Convention. And there is a Security Council Resolution 1540, which uh, tells us how to use technology for good and minimize using it for bad. Uh, there is mechanism available, but still we have to work together for non-state element, for example. And this is a garage technology, biotechnology. You can do it in your kitchen even. You uh, can prepare some bad thing. So that is needs awareness, and ASA too could have some good planning for this to uh, make aware our youth, our young scientists, so that they are, uh, you know, ignorantly are, uh, you know, unintended consequences of the lab. Uh, something may escape. Even with this pandemic, people question the origin of, uh, you know, uh, the viruses, etc. So what we need to do is good human, as you said, excellent. This is for human, uh, you know, uh, saving. It's not for nation. For the whole humanity, we have to work like one unit, color, blind commitment. Irrespective of caste, color, religion, section, we have to work together, scientists, to, you know, make aware people that this will damage irreversible loss uh, that we can incur. So I agree with you, and we are working. There is another group. I am uh, the co-chair of, uh, remain the co-chair of UNESCO Commission for Ethics and Science and Technology, COMEST. Uh, so you can Google it today. The focus was different, so I didn't talk about that. Inshallah, next sometime we can discuss it more. This is a very good question that you raised. Thank excellent, you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for... Uh, managing time and delivering an uh, outstanding, uh, you know, and thought-provoking uh, lecture here. Uh, thank you so much.